Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. Bets Birds Golf here for the first look for the 2024 Players Championship TBC Sawgrass. Pete Dye. Uh, I don't know that we can do best field in golf anymore, Ron. Uh, I, I, I enjoyed seeing you touch on that actually in the preview. Uh, Ron's preview, our guy PJ Splits 101 here uh, up on the site of Bets Birds Golf. What's going on, bud? Hey. Um, yeah, I mean, it's. Um... It's hard, you know, when you have, you know, since last year, John Rahm, Terrell Hatton, you know, you see Joaquin Neiman playing so well everywhere, you know, it's, uh, yeah, really can't say that. I know people have been talking about that. It's, it still is the best field anywhere, but you, when you're looking at 144 players, uh, you got 47 players making either their first or second start this year at the players. Uh, so it's, it's very watered down. I think we'd all agree. And I just, just with how golf has been going lately, like, I mean, you could have one of those players win this week. You never know. Um, and then, you know, you get into Scotty, like, talk about taking all the drama out of a Sunday where, you know, I thought there was going to be, you know, down the stretch, back and forth. And he just, I mean, we all we all knew this was going to happen when the yeah. putter actually clicked and you saw it happen. Yeah, the, a lot of, I think, mean, like, the prevailing narrative coming into the weekend for, uh, Arnold Palmer was that he look, you know, it's Bay Hill, it's a difficult test of golf. We have a 69 man field. The tour really needs some drama on Sunday. We need a stack leaderboard. Uh, we need some sort of like we need drama. And like we got a little bit right coming into it, we had a stack leaderboard, we were absolutely loaded and ready to go, but we didn't get drama. But what we got is the alternative, which I think is an acceptable performance. was a and look i really always try to fight this ron like i even like you and i when i push back on some stuff i'm like that's a small sample like i hate to be like you know prisoner of the moment what we saw yesterday and really what we saw all week i mean like the field struggled yesterday everyone fell back anyone that was in contention fell back we saw it a little bit on saturday even you had that group going into the weekend with six guys at seven under they all kind of fell back uh and zal kind of came into it and scotty just kind of plugged along Kind of figured it out with the putter on the back half, uh, you know, on, on Saturday, and between Saturday and his entire round on Sunday, going out shooting a 66 in that field where everyone else fell off, anyone else basically that was in contention for the most part. I mean, win the play pretty well, uh, but again, like you finished four under, and you were in the, like top six for the week, and he went out and boat raced everyone with a 66, did not miss a putt. His final 23 putts inside 15 feet, he holds. This is borderline terrifying for the rest of the tour. Uh, it's very, it's like borderline terrifying. Uh, someone who likes to bet outright golf markets where you all of a sudden like, and again, I don't want to be prisoner of the moment. He is, you know, had not won for 51 weeks, but everything that we had seen, it was just like, this is what happens if the putter is even field average. And then all of a sudden the putter wasn't field average. And it kind of coincided with a change. So it wasn't just like a spike putting week for Scotty. It was, I got a little bit of a longer putter. We had a mallet style putter. Uh, some of the, even like the lag putting on some stuff, even the ones he didn't make, he put himself in a position where like the knee knockers were two footers instead of like the five footers. Uh, the, the in total around the game, it's not just the ball striking. It's, it is the around the game thing as well that I like, he put himself in position where it was makeable. Like they're like three foot, just kind of like tap ins now instead of, giving himself like a seven, eight footer. He was dominant and we're going to a place where he just won a place where no one goes back to back a place where you noted in your preview article that not only does no one go back to back here. I think he's, I think you said it since 05, we haven't had a winner finish inside the top 10. So we have this real juxtaposition of what goes on historically at TBC Sawgrass and what we are seeing right now with Scotty running absolutely nuclear on the greens and the tee to green stuff. It just, it isn't even like, that's not prisoner of the moment stuff. This is tiger woods, like just from a tee to green standpoint. And now all of a sudden we're putting. So it's terrifying. Um, yeah. Let's look at the opening odd boards. You can kind of, I'll bring it up and you can kind of, uh, you know, touch on anything I just said there. I mean, when his putter shows any signs of life, you know, it's, it's so tempting to just take your chances with him versus the rest of the, you know, what appears to be, you know, even the elite players, you know, when you look at them, um, you know, Rory, Hovland, Shoffley, Cantley, like 
they were they were all horrible on Sunday. And you, when you look at his margin on just those players, like it was just massive. And so, um, yeah, you bring up some good points because TPC Sawgrass is, is pretty much the most volatile course out there with, you know, water on. I mean, we're looking at seven, 16, 17 holes here. Um, you know, we've seen even back in 2022 when, when the wind kicks up, when the weather, which can get bad here in March, uh, what can happen to the leaderboard. And so, yeah, it's like, you know, if there was an event where you would not expect Scotty to just come right back and win again, it, it would probably be this one. But then you have all that historical stuff. And, you know, if his putter's back, like, is it anybody really going to be within shouting distance of him? Like, you would think so because of Sawgrass. But, um, man, you just never know what this week what's going to happen. Yeah, so, I mean, like, holding that number of putts. <laughs> you know, holding 23 straight putts from 15 feet in is definitely a small sample that is going to regress. <laughs> I don't think we are now looking at the best putter on tour, but it's hard for him to not move in. And I think putting and, you know, good and bad confidence, how you, you know, stand over the ball, how you feel uh, is a massive, massive piece of that, you know, more than anything else. Right. I mean, like, do you feel like you can make this putt? Are you worried about the comebacker, right? Is he giving, getting it to the hole to give himself a shot to make it where he's not afraid of what's going to happen on the comeback? And um, so like, yeah, he, we're not going to have Scotty necessarily just being the best putter on tour, but we never had in the strokes gained era. No one's ever finished an event inside the top 12 and all the strokes gained buckets. And like, he just, he just did that. And it's hard to not be wrapped up in a spot where he's going back to contend in a place that just made everyone else look very human. I mean, look, I'm, I had a Vic ticket. I'll go to the window for Vic anytime. He went 75, 75 over the weekend. Um, you know, JT played okay, got himself in the mix, but like these guys couldn't avoid, avoid blow up holes, doubles, same thing. Like win them without multiple doubles. It's easy to say, yeah, all of a sudden, like he's winning maybe last week. Right. But like <laughs> no one else was avoiding multiple doubles except Scotty. Right. And just consistently put himself in position to, to score when you're just that elite T to green. Uh, yeah. It's just, is a, it's a whole new world. So yeah, I'm, I'm very interested to see, like, I'm really fired up typically Ron. Like, we, like you and I both like to bet, you know, maybe not as much in the past, but like Monday morning, I want to jump. What's what's going on reshuffling on these events that have been posted for a little bit. Like I don't have any fervor to jump into the odds board this morning. I'm just trying to figure out like, do I change unit size to bet Scotty? Like, what do I do? I'm on vacation this week. I'm not going to be sweating it as much. Uh, I would just like to be like, yeah, I'm going, I'm going golfing with my boys. I just, hey, I just want to Scotty out right. I'll spot some finishing position stuff. Like, what do I do? I, it's a very, very unique thing. So try to make that decision. I have the odds board up here at FanDuel. Shop around because obviously these markets are different from place to place. But for the most part, you know, you jumped in early yesterday on a nice opening number on Scotty. Uh, those numbers are long gone, even at eight, which is really hard to do. We're like 550, five flat across the market. And we've gone from what we saw last week where it was kind of Scotty and Rory. I think Rory at Bay Hill was maybe a little bit different. Rory has one here before as well. But now we have another teardrop with Rory at 12, Rory at 14 in some spots, and then a collective group of the next tier that is well, maybe a little bit bigger with Zal and, and uh, Hideki who are both playing decent golf comparatively here in like the mid-20s. And then we see a pretty precipitous drop-off where these guys are getting into, again, just – Everything else aside, Scotty, these are appealing numbers, typically. Uh, you know, Oberg at 33, Max at 33, uh, you know, Colin at 35. Colin, Colin went OB on Friday off the tee, and it was just downhill from there. It's just really hard to kind of get any excitement to jump in anywhere else. But, again, uh, this is a, a unique track. But, again, shop these numbers. You can find some unique things. Some big numbers on some good golfers, but can they go to Sawgrass and win? Yeah, and last word on Scotty here. Um, when he won at the players last year, he gained 17.2 strokes tee to green. He only gained 0.1 strokes putting. So he's kind of proven, even if he's not, you know, making everything like he did this week, that he's, I mean, with as tough of a test as TPC Sawgrass is, you know, the 11th toughest annual course on tour, like, you know, he doesn't need to putt super well to win here. You already proved that last year. So. Yeah, uh, exciting. I mean, I, I still love this track. I love uh, you know what uh, Pete Dye forces players to do here in terms of you know, just watching you know strategy versus just a place where bomb and gouge. It does 
It has been a place historically where, because there's a little bit of a less than driver course, and there's a place where there's a ton of water and volatility that it brings a lot more players into the field uh, or into the mix. Uh, but I'd be interested to see how that plays out. But yeah, a great, uh, great event to watch. If you want to get access to all that we're doing here at BetSports Golf, you want to get access to the rabbit hole, which you want to get access to the rabbit hole. We're going to show you that if you have not seen that before. Uh, it is the premier tool out there right now to look at golf data, to chop it up, to split it up, to build models. Right now, you can partner with our friends over at Vivid Picks, your parent company, Vivid Seats, secondary ticket market. Uh, they have a DFS Pick'em platform. Uh, we have partnered with them. Use the promo code, download the app, use our promo code, BetSpurtsGolf. We'll click on any of these links here on the site. You can get the rest of the year for just $5 at Vivid Picks. It's a $5 deposit in play. After you play your first $5 entry at Vivid Picks, about 48 hours later, you'll get an email telling you how to access your BetSports Golf account. You'll get access to our premium Discord, all the articles, all the picks and plays that we're making, along with the rabbit hole, which is really kind of the, you know, the, the again, the premier tool out there. You can get access to our models to see what we're building and, and uh, doing this week. But we're going to do that here at the top. Um, you scroll down here. BetSports or uh, Vivid Picks is only available in about 28 states. So if it's not one of your states, DM us directly, uh, myself or Ron or us on BetSports Golf uh, on Twitter, and we'll get you a promo code to uh, get a discount for the first month or for the annual subscription, uh, the most aggressive that we can do. And prices are going up. Uh, prices are going up probably around Augusta, so you're going to want to get in. Uh, we're going to grandfather pricing in, so you will be locked in uh, for your life for uh, this current current price. So now is a great time to jump in player pages are coming soon player pages are going to be they're going to be hot uh tournament pages are coming soon some new tools probably coming out this week from a betting standpoint so look out for that uh so definitely check out this deal it is a, a deal that's also going away uh so you want to take advantage of that before it does all right ron a lot of different ways to attack the uh modeling this week probably a difficult event to model uh, but where do you want to start in terms of our uh, data this week? So <clears throat> in our Bets vs. Golf Discord, um, what I've started to do is list kind of based on the course for the week, uh, just all the different filters that you can use in the rabbit hole. And this is not even not even the stats. And so, yeah, in the Discord right now, like there's a long list. Like I think I've got around 20 at least in there. <laughs> and so, <clears throat> yeah, like you said, there's so many different angles again for this week. Um, you know, whether you want to look at Florida courses, um, whether you want to look at, you know, in our filter menu um, is going to be really key this week. Uh, so you've got difficult scoring conditions um, and strong fields, I guess, with all these kind of uh, signature events. Obviously, this week we have a full field. Um with, you know, obviously probably the strongest field all year, um, minus the majors that we'll see in the PGA Tour. So, yeah, you can go in there and you can, you know, select very strong fields. Um, for me, kind of some of the unique things, again, is, you know, if you look, um, you know, on that second row, we have bunker bunker numbers. And so uh, TPC Sawgrass has the fifth most bunkers on tour. Not, not that difficult. Um, so kind of whether you want to include that or not, but the water danger for sure. So this as everybody knows, you know, 17th hole, you know, you have 16 total holes um, with water present um, and uh, a threat to golfers. And so definitely a week to check that high box for, for water danger. Um, kind of did that a few weeks ago with PJ National, um, yeah. which is a, another comp course um, for this. And so, yeah, those are probably a, a few that I'd start with. And uh, we'll get to a few more as we go here. Okay. Uh, well, let's take a look at that. Let's look at, uh, we have, would you classify scoring conditions? Um, I like what we did a couple weeks ago. I think we did this at PJ national where we went average, difficult, very difficult because we essentially were trying to uh, just suss out any of the easier, very easy scoring conditions. Um, do you think that's an approach to go this week? Uh, do you prefer the field strength again, and to listeners and viewers, you can do all these, right? You can add them all to your model. Um, or you can just sometimes look at them. I think as in addition to your model as a tiebreaker, to see how players go. Uh, do you have any leans there? Like what's your the first thing you're banging in this week, Ron, is is what? Yeah, so for scoring conditions, so so TBC Sawgrass did not used to play this difficult when it was in May. So if you go back, you know, before 2019, um, it played a little bit easier. Um, yeah. the, the, the March start brings in more of the wind, the weather that we've seen the last few years. 
Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going, um, probably, I probably would go for this week. Difficult, very difficult just because of the variance. Um, and I like to also combine these together sometimes when, when you go difficult and then you also combine it with a strong, very strong field. Um, cause it's kind of, you know, we have other difficult courses, but you know, not all the time we have, you know, all the best players on the PJ tour together. So, um, I'll combine those together. Um, I'll definitely go high water danger. Um, Poetry of the Alice Greens this week. You know, we're, we're pretty much the only site that has that option where you can get the exact greens. You know, these are not Poa Greens. These are not Bermuda. Uh, it's too cold for the Bermuda to grow this early in the year. So Poetry of the Alice. And, and you do have a certain number of players who, who do pop on these types of greens. Um, okay. And so, yeah, I'd start with those for sure. Okay, awesome. Uh, so I don't typically like to do this many at once. Uh, Cause I think it messes your sample, but I think these somewhat correlate. Uh, so I'm okay with it. Let's see what we end up getting here. We'll kick back the sample. We're obviously we're defaulted to uh, the last 12 months. Uh, so we're getting 20 events. So let's just look back at two years and see the instances of what captures here. And you can see anytime you, uh, you do this, you can mess around with the time frame. You can also mess around here with this middle bar to mess around with the rounds. You could set a minimum rounds feature that will like just kind of sample out any really small rounds. You, know, you can just, Corn Ferry guys, rookies, things like that. You know, you can take a look at it and decide if you want to filter that out or not. But I think uh, there are definitely instances where it is beneficial to do that. So it doesn't mess up the data set that you're looking at. We're looking at this display uh, via rank for these strokes gain positions, these strokes gain stats. You can mess around with average strokes gain, total, or percentage of rounds gained as well. We were just playing around in the filter by conditions section. This view section is also crucial where you have all the strokes gain metrics, but then you can break it down here off the tee approach, uh, all the other ones you could see here on YouTube if you're watching. If you're watching, we appreciate you hanging out. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, we'll be back on Tuesday with the betting show. Ron's here on Wednesday with the DFS show. Uh, we'll continue to do this and you know walk through every week. We're here on Monday mornings, every Monday morning at 9 Eastern to walk through our first look here. So uh, let's take a look here. We'll back out uh, two years and let's just see. We'll put a 20 round minimum and see what we get here. We're the best in the field. Over the last two years, difficult and very difficult scoring conditions in strong and very strong field strengths. Uh, and we're getting a pretty good sample there. Uh, Vic at the top, total strokes gained. Zal Torres, again, this makes sense. They've played some of their best golf. Zal, you're going to get most of Zal being two years ago for this sample of data. Uh, but telling nonetheless, Scotty Scheffler, third. Roy McIlroy, fourth. Xander, fifth. Uh, and a fairly interesting top 10. Some names I think we would... We would consider there. Uh, let's add this. All you need to do to add it to a model uh, is hit this little plus button. It brings up a little uh, description box. You don't have to put anything here, but I'm going to do for myself because I think we'll end up having a couple of these. Uh, this is difficult uh, and strong field. That is not how you spell a field. All right. Um, we will back this out, and you can just X out of these. Uh, what about P die tracks? Do you think there's any use in looking at, uh, anything else that P die has done? Do you think that they're, you know, TPC sawgrass stands alone, or do you think that's something worth taking a look at this week? Yeah, I think that's a mistake. Some people make, um, even, you know, I think, I think when you look at the entirety of the P die tracks, like there's definitely, he definitely has a philosophy with how he, how he builds courses, but I think the TPC sawgrass, kind of almost stands on its own. I mean, you can see a little bit of it, you know, PJ West with all the water, you know, there's some, there's sure. some whole redesigns in that course, but yeah, I think, I think it's not a good idea to just lump all those together. What, what I like to do is, um, and I put this on my course facts, um, is look at comp courses and just, you know, you can individually select them. So that's something I don't think we've done in here this morning uh, in the morning yet, but like, so PJ national, that's a big one for sure for me this week. Um, Sedgefield, is another one mm -hmm. where you see a lot of kind of repeat winners, kind of kind of similar off the tee um, with irons being so important. Um, I like to look at PJ West as well, just because of the water, it kind of brings the water into play as well, as long with PJ National. Um, Harbor Town, there's definitely some characteristics of Harbor Town here. Sure. Um, and even for me, TPC Southland is another one I like to look at. Um, it has some similarities. So, um, there's there's a few more that you know you could, you could kind of make comparisons to, but those would be kind of my my top ones to kind of combine and look at this week, and, and just like 
what I would do is run maybe, you know, the last three years, even last five years to get more sample, just, um, you know, some of these, you know, players who have played here a bunch. Um, I think should it's we yeah, add, PGA West. Actually, it's going to be under Pete Dye. Uh, yeah, yeah, throw Saugers in there for, for – um, add those in there. And then um, I think uh, PJ West is, is kind of – I think I renamed it Pete Dye Stadium, yeah. Stadium course, yeah. All right, perfect. All right, we'll hit apply and see what we get. So, Mr. Allen, you said we'll back out the sample a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, I have it locked on 20, but let's see. Let's see what we get. We're going to get some pretty big samples for some guys. Yeah, that's not bad. Um, but again, just piece of the puzzle, right? There's no – one way to do this is no perfect way to do this, but I think this is definitely interesting to see. Uh, in looking at all these comp courses, Patrick Hanley comes out on top, tied actually from a stroke scene total standpoint with Tommy Fleetwood, Russell Henley, Sunjay M, Scotty Scheffler, Cam Davis, which makes sense. Cam Davis has played actually pretty well. Some less than driver courses fared pretty well here last year. Uh, ben Ann, Sam Burns, and Minwoo Lee, who was in the mix last year, right? That final group with Scotty and folded like a cheap shirt real quick. Uh, and uh, Xander, no sweat, Xander. Uh, uh, again, another nice Sunday off the off the path for Xander, which is you know just his absolute calling card. We get Xander like a thirtieth, thirty fifth on us going into a Sunday, just a late tee time, doesn't make the TV very much. You just pound Xander live to finish in the top ten, top twenty. Uh, he loves that uh, no smoke backdoor top ten, top twenty. So. Yeah, definitely interesting. Let's add this in. I oh, will add strokes gain total here. Um, again, just another. These will be our comp courses. Again, there are so many ways for you guys to take a look at these stats and cut them up. Uh, I mean, again, you can build multiple models. You have this download CSV button option. Again, you can build a model, put it in with another model, weigh it differently, whatever you want to do. There's some unique options that you can do here with the rabbit hole you can't do anywhere else. You also can go into this view expert ranking section. You can look at my model, Ron's model. Uh, we have uh, Matt Vicenzi. We have uh, Andy Lack for Inside Golf Podcast. Uh, so you want to see what, you know, you see what Lack is looking at this week. You want to see what stats Vicenzi is putting in. You can look at those as well. Again, not uh, a answer test, uh, but I think, you know, hey, look, Ron knows what he's doing here, guys. You want to see what Ron has in his model that you might not have in your model. You can go ahead and do that here too uh, and put it in the ears and add it there too. So uh, I think this is a very interesting way to attack it here. Um what should we do approach wise? Uh, just basic strokes gained approach. Is there anything in particular that you want to target that's maybe a little bit more granular? Or what do you think here? Yeah. So this week, um, let me look up uh, my numbers here. So yeah. So TPC Sawgrass. So especially from if we're getting into uh, kind of especially from let's see here outside. No, inside of 150 yards. So it's it's, it's the, pretty much the toughest wedge course on tour. Um, so if you go to um, go to the filter, if you scroll all the way down, you will see. First of all, I, I would check for gaining on approach. Um, I'm going difficult, very difficult, um, because it is. Um, you know, greens are greens are average size, uh, but just with all the different factors with the wind. Last year they increased the rough to three and a half inches. Um, from two and a half and so it's going to be there again this year and uh, we saw green regulation percentage drop from 65 percent in 2022 to 59 percent last year and so that that thicker rough really um, had an yeah. impact uh, so i'll do this and then if you go down even more to the um let's see actually no go back up so another another one we could look at is with the rough being thick there is a high missed fairway penalty this week um, and, and rough penalty as well. So those are two I'll probably individually um, kind of build into the model as well, just with, you know, trying to, trying to get some of that rough impact into the model. All right. Let's see what we got here. Uh, last two years we're getting a, yeah, I think in a decent sample size for these guys, a little smaller, but I think it is something that maybe you can do these individually. Um, let me just turn off the, I want to get a little bit bigger sample. So we'll miss, we'll turn off the miss fairway. We'll look at that separately. We'll see how this changes. Yeah. We get uh, gaining on approach, difficult, very difficult. We're going to get our last 50 rounds for most of these guys. So I think that that's yeah, basically everyone in the field. So uh, Scotty at the top, Colin Morikawa, uh, Tony Finau, Tom Hoagie, a nice finish here last year. Uh, Lowry playing really good golf right now. Hideki, Wyndham, Corey Connors, Will Zalatoris, Siwoo Kim, who was one here before. I think this does tell, 
I like that stuff. I do like when there's a little bit of confirmation bias and a stat that looks like some success in leaderboards in that event in the past. And again, this is a tricky place to do that. But I do think that there's something to that where you feel like, all right, this is this is maybe a stat that's looking to, that can tell me a little bit of what I'm actually doing. And some of these are, are more descriptive than predictive, right? That some of this is tough. So like, how do you pull it forward? Um, you know, looking at spots where you know these stats in particular, I think are more descriptive than predictive, but I think it's okay. It's what we're like dealt with, you know, predicting golf is hard to pull some of it forward. I uh, mean, making it make sense. So I think, you know, looking at these and things. You see, I was going to say, you see Tom Hoagie right there, you know, set the record, course record here on Saturday last year. And so, yeah, some of that confirmation bias is definitely yeah. here. And I know people disagree on this. I know you, you may as well, but one thing I really like to do, because you don't get, you know, you don't have a ton of sample size on these types of courses is I'll even pull it out to five years and, and, and widen the sample out and just kind of sure. look at that as well. I know golfers change, you know, over time. Uh, but just, you know, these these tracks like TPC Sawgrass are so unique. Um, you know, when you're looking at, you know, just major there's probably included in a lot of these numbers as well. Um, so just to wind it out, I think uh, is, is a decent idea as well. Yeah, I think, I think it's good. Again, another thing I probably wouldn't model, but I think it's okay to look at and just see uh, what does that sample size look like and does it make sense to, to mess around with it. Um, off the team, lots of different ways. And again, we have unique stats here. Uh, in the rabbit hole that you cannot model anywhere else, including total driving, uh, carry distance, distance from the edge of the fairway, uh, things that I think are um, maybe a little bit more, I think, predictive, uh, that I think makes sense. And some applications for what we're looking here at Sawgrass. And we also have the condition wrong with less than driver, which I think is in play this week too, because of the forced layups, because of a lot of these drives being um, landing in the similar area off the tee because water's in play, dog legs are in play. Uh, how do you want to approach off the tee? And again, I mean, you probably want to approach it in a handful of different ways this week, but what do you want to do this morning? Yeah, this is the ultimate positional course, um, target golf. You know, you're trying to get from point A to point B and you're just trying to survive, keep your ball out of the water. Um, so, so yeah, for sure for this week, um, definitely going less than driver. Um, it's got one of the lowest rates of drivers on tour. Um, and so that's a definitely a good one to look at. And, you know, you kind of see some surprising numbers, you know, some of these guys, like you even said, like a Cam Davis, who, you know, you would think, you know, he's a bomber off the tee. He's going to play his best on, you know, bomber courses, but he actually, you know, guys like him, you know, a, a Taylor Pendrith, even Gary Woodland, mm -hmm. they, they typically play their best on these courses where they can club down. Um, and even though like, and this is another interesting thing I've never even done before, but, you know, we have distance from edge of the fairway. So even on a course like this, and I'll even, you know, separately, I'll throw in difficult to gain strokes off the tee, which you can also do on the filter model and look at the distance from the edge of the fairway, even on less than driver courses and see, OK, when guys are even if they're clubbing down, you know, who is still struggling, who is still missing the fairway um, by a large margin. Um, so that's that's a really good stat this week when you have a lot of danger. Um, when you have, a, you know, the threat of penalty shots, um, if you're errant with your tee shots, you know, even on, you know, a hole like 17, obviously that comes into play this week with, you know, obviously they're hitting an iron off the tee, but, you know, you have that water danger as well. Obviously not for, um, you know, distance from the edge of the fairway because you're not hitting to the fairway. But, um, you know, I think I still think, you know, overall, you know, good drive percentage is going to be key this week. Um, and yep. so those are kind of my main two on this page uh, that I'll be looking at. Yeah, it's so interesting because it's, yeah, I think, you know, total driving, you can make a case because I think maybe there are some instances where uh, the move from, you know, midsummer or, you know, May to March, I think changes things a little bit from a distance standpoint, too. I think you highlighted that well in your article. Uh, I love distance from the edge of the fairway in conjunction with driving accuracy because I think it tells a better picture of like actual accuracy, whereas accuracy is a binary outcome. It's a yes, no stat. And distance from the edge of the fairway, I think, captures. Some of the golfers that maybe just miss sometimes, you know, you can have some of these hard runoffs, some of these, you know, firm and fast fairways where maybe the tee shot landed where you wanted it to and it rolled into the first cut. Um, you're getting a basically a no grade from an accuracy standpoint, but you're actually just inches off the fairway. And I think that tells a story that we're actually looking to capture here. Uh, so I think that that matters a ton. So right now we're looking at less than driver. We have that filter on. If you look at strokes gained off the tee, Last two years, last 50 rounds, we're kind of approaching that for a lot of guys. Again, so pretty good drivers in the golf ball. Uh, Rory, Brian Harmon, you mentioned Taylor Pendrith, surprising one, guy you think is a bomber. Uh, less than driver has been pretty nice over the last 32 rounds for him. Scotty, Hayden Buckley, very accurate driver off the tee. 
Hovland, Sanjay, Kevin Yu, another guy with you know, some distance that is getting a little bit of a, of a bump there too. Uh, Tyler Duncan, again, the opposite guy you expect to kind of paint fairways and hangs back distance wise and Colin Morikawa there uh, in your top 10. So very, very interesting mix there too. Um, yeah, I mean, there are a lot. Of, I think all these are, are interesting this week. It's just kind of filled, figuring out what to add, how to weigh it. Uh, for the sake of this, I'm going to do just off the tee uh, strokes gained with less than driver, which I think is interesting. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, what are the like one other thing? And again, people can look at this and go in the view section. You can look at all your putting ranges. You can look at fairway and rough approach. You can look at the proximity buckets from both of those, which I think is massive. Around the green, I think matters somewhat this week. You got to figure out what you want to do here. You mentioned the Poet Trivialis buckets being able to capture that. And that's unique here for the rabbit hole. Um, you know, these are the scoring conditions. We want to look at, you know, bogey avoidance, water damage. Again, lots of different ways to utilize the rabbit hole. Ron has some of these not only in the Discord for subscribers, but on our uh, on the site too in the preview section. If you scroll down to the bottom, you'll look at some of the stats that Ron is weighing here. Uh, what's one other thing that you want to capture for us this morning? Yeah, let's go to putting. Um, and, you know, there's a couple – couple of key ones here so uh, combined together they probably won't work but you know i definitely think you know these are fast greens these are you know we're looking at 13 on the stint meter to start the week probably getting to 14 by sunday so um you have that option of you know green speed um but yeah poe trivialis as well i think is, is just one to look at here um and so you know there's there's six courses on tour that use um you know these greens and so uh i think that's that's the one I'll, I would focus on next, just just to capture something something from putting yep. on the greens. I want to show folks who are have been hanging with us and have uh, been using this so far. Uh, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, in the bottom right, there's a new addition to the filter section, uh, wind, which will be a factor in some way, shape, or form this week, uh, broken down into calm, moderate, and windy. Uh, again, we are yeah, it's Monday morning. I think, you know, capturing where we're going to be at and how we want to utilize this on a Monday morning is a little bit tougher. But again, as the week goes on, as more information comes out, as we have a better feel for what the actual forecast looks like, there's an application here for the wind. This is a new addition to the filtering section on the, on the rabbit hole, which we're really excited about. And we're, over the next couple of weeks, guys, we have kind of like some new stuff coming each and every week. So we are continuing to add tools, additions to this. Ken mentioned the tournament pages and the player pages that are going to be coming soon. I think you're going to be a great addition to your, again, looking to build DFS lineups, player pools, betting cards. Uh, One-stop shop is our goal here for Betsperts Golf and the rabbit hole in particular. So, all right, uh, we're going to look at these Poet Trivialis greens, see what we get from a sample standpoint, see what we need to do. Uh, two years, 50 rounds is getting us about 32 rounds for most of these guys. Uh, and you can see here, this is like shot link captured rounds and total rounds played. Uh, just for the sake of it too, you can hover over any stat as well. It lets you know what the actual description is. But let's see, strokes game putting. Last couple of years, Poet Trivialis Greens, uh, Sammy Burns, Taylor Montgomery, Sam Ryder, Chad Ramey, good putters. Uh, Matt Kuchar has had some success here historically, maybe not in uh, this phase of his career. Troy Merritt, Brian Harmon, Justin Saw, Aaron Badley, Chesson Hadley here, uh, which I think is interesting. Min Wu Lee, great putting week. Last year, great putting week uh, at Bay Hill as well. Uh, Ryan Fox, some interesting names. I always like to see the, the reverse too. Who are some guys that we need to stay away from? Colin has not putted well here. Lucas Glover, again, like, you know, maybe this is old Lucas Glover putting stuff. Luke List uh, got out and you're all of a sudden on, on Thursday. I'm like, is Luke List just good again? It's like, this we have to just worry about Luke List. He got off to a real hot stop on Thursday that came back to the world in a big, big way as the week went along. Uh, Tom Hoagie, interesting to see. He struggled to the great uh, event here last year. Zalatoris, small sample, and I think you know, new Zalatoris with the broomstick. I'm not too worried about that, but again, always interesting to see for the sake of uh, the program this morning. We'll add it here and give folks a look at how to run a model. Uh, once hey, really you add, do you want? Yeah, go ahead. Really quick, go to the floor ceiling filter, and I think this is this is another thing that, that I like to look at is and I would okay. widen it out to maybe three years instead of two years. And, um, 
yeah, this just allows you to view, like if you want to see, well, okay, this guy may be a poor putter, but he he tends to spike on, especially on these greens. And this is the only place you're going to find anywhere where you can actually look at just poetry of Alice, any greens, any of the filters you can take and you can use um, in this floor ceiling on this menu. And it's, it's an amazing tool just to see kind of who pops, you know, in certain areas and um, especially putting. I think putting is really key for this. Yeah, we have talked about this. This is again like you hear about spike putting weeks. You hear about spiked. Uh, it's usually used in, in the uh, discourse around putting. But this is a spot where you can actually look at what the data is and what that uh, actually is. So instead of just like hypothetical spike putting weeks, oh, tee to green is great. We just need one of those spike putting weeks. How frequently does that actually happen? Uh, from the ranges of just gaining strokes, as you can see here, plus zero. So just how often are you just at field or above all the way up to five strokes putting or any of these strokes gain metrics uh, from like, again, this is a spot where you can actually match a prevailing narrative, a prevailing talking point in golf handicapping and actually back it up with data uh, in any of the splits as well. So right now we're looking at Poet Trivialis in particular. Uh, you want to look at who is gaining, uh, how frequently guys gain at least a stroke. You can see Taylor Montgomery here. And again, these are small samples. I think there's also you know, some, even without looking at the POA, backing out and just looking at putting in general, how often the guys have some stroked or some uh, spiked putting weeks, uh, looking at uh, two or more. You, you, Thomas Dietrich, Taylor Montgomery, uh, Camila Vajegas, Mad McNeely. Like these are uh, some good putters, but like how often does that happen? Uh, we always get to a little bit of slag message. Uh, three plus, how often does that happen? So look, Ryan Fox. You know, kind of middling, but look, we have some spike putting weeks from from Ryan Fox. I know Aaron Rye, not a great putter per se, but sometimes when he gets hot, uh, he gets actually really hot comparatively. So I think this is a really unique way to look at it. Uh, I think it's very, very, very useful. So uh, let's create a mixed condition model and see what we have here. We default to weighing these all equally. You can see if you put anything in the description section, what that looks like. We got to name it. So this is Ron and Noonan first look players um and again you could save as many of your models as possible you can see i got a lot of old stuff We're working on making sure these are things that you can um run anytime you can build basically evergreen models and rerun them for that week's field we're doing some of the work on the back end to make sure you can do that if you just want to have a rolling form model or rolling off the team model a rolling approach model you can have them save them and then rerun them every week uh, which i think is a really really cool feature again we're working on some of that in the back end um, again, I will default to, well, let's, we'll bump this up. I think, you know, strokes gain total difficult fields and comp courses will probably go a little bit extra on we'll go 25. We'll keep approach, um, at 20. We're also going to have something here soon where you can actually have the, the math done for you. So you don't have to do math live on the show. It's not a great uh, viewing experience for anyone, uh, but we'll do that here. We'll see what we get. Click save and generate the model. And again, you can build as many of these as you want. Scotty Scheffler at the top of ours. Patrick Haley, second. Xander, uh, Disgusting Brothers, two and three. Hovland at four. Hideki at five. Colin at six. Midwooly at seven. Russell Henley at eight. Tommy Fleetwood at nine. Jordan Spieth at 10. So an interesting, you know, top 12, top 20 here, which I think makes a ton of sense. Again, if you forget what it is, you just hover over the icon here. It'll tell you basically all of the filters that you built here which is very, very interesting. So again, subscribe, come back for the betting show on Tuesday with myself and Andy. Uh, I mean, it looks like we're still stuck previewing that here <laughs> in the background. Uh, no Arnold Palmer is the players. Uh, but yeah, you want to check this out. You can build your own models, subscribe, take advantage of the, the discount right now uh, via Vivid Picks or DM us on Twitter at BetSportsGolf. We'll get you a promo code to take advantage of that. So good stuff as always. Ron's preview is something you cannot miss. The best, most extensive, uh, actionable preview currently on the internet uh, and currently posted on Betsports Golf. So uh, before you take off, we appreciate you hanging out. Uh, if you're watching on on uh, Twitter, follow along. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe, rate and review, and again, come back for the betting show first on Tuesday. So for Ron, I'm Noonan. We appreciate it. We'll see you all soon. Thanks, everyone.